This is Inverness in the St. Louis, Missouri area. Now, before we really get into this, I want to explain that this was the original proposal. We have 10% uh, less street, 15% less street surface, fewer lots uh, on the original plan adjacent to the open space, and the the original plan had 9% less lot size. So those were the, the numbers of what we were able to accomplish with this plan. The, the last plan, typically we're in that 25% range of a less street. This one's a little less because the plan uh, wasn't that inefficient. But we're not looking at uh, something for efficiency. We're looking at something that really grabs the market and when it boils down to is who's going to buy that home here versus in that uh, typical subdivision. So as you, we enter the main street, we're looking at space, home fronts. This is what we want to do is we want to have a main street approach on every development. So not a disconnected convolution of streets. And then from that main street, we have neighborhoods that branch off into it. In each neighborhood, we want to have a sense of space. We want to have that welcoming feel as we enter the neighborhoods. Now, this is the uh, final geometry, uh, the final grading from the engineer. And it, uh, we, we did an initial grading, but this is, is really showing the final grading. Here we veer off uh, to a, uh, a cul-de-sac on the left. And as we come around this development on the main street, it always opens up to space. We have an existing pond off to the right, and uh, we opened up the cul-de-sac. So people, when they come to the cul-de-sac, they could see the pond. These homes on the right could see the pond. And so we're looking for something that just maintains flow, time and energy just to get in and out uh, to, to your home and back plummets. Now this uh, is another neighborhood to the right. That street loops back to the end cul-de-sac. So essentially we have a continuous uh, uh, streets that are interconnected and the walk systems are interconnected to the cul-de-sacs. It's extremely easy to walk through this and it's this idea of a pedestrian highway. So as you can see as these little neighborhoods they branch out as we go down the main street and then we end up with an oversized cul-de-sac. And then that loop street I, I mentioned uh, earlier on the right that comes back over here and uh, then as we look down there, there's actually a pond view uh, when you enter from the uh, uh, each end. Now, this uh, widening between the homes, that's an emergency trail to an existing cul-de-sac. So the neighbors to the north, they don't have this um, problem that we've, we're putting extra traffic through because that's a walk that can handle emergency vehicle. This is, you can see the topography starts getting a little bit interesting here. That's a, a detention pond in a low area that exists, that, that yellowish area. Those are very large existing homes and we're really not placing a lot of our homes up against the homes that are behind there. And then this is more of an upscale, uh, larger lot area that ends up in a cul-de-sac in, in an area where we're surrounded by homes on the edge. So the property, we're working with a topo, very little earthwork. We have all this space. It's a very elegant place to live. Now these home models, they are examples from the builder. Uh, typically, when we know the builder, we'll put their homes in, uh, so you know we get more of a realistic look. And and all the three Ds that we do, we don't charge for. So we don't charge the time to put the homes in. We don't charge the time to build the three D. The only time that they get billed on any kind of three D is when we are creating a presentation for approvals. So 95% of the time they're not even getting charged for our clients. You see that main trail, how it connects into this cul-de-sac, and then look at the tree-lined trail uh, where it's going from the Loop Street through the cul-de-sac, across the main street at this time there's no traffic down to another cul-de-sac that connects to another main trail to the park and then as we uh, look more to the right you can see how all this, this this just kind of flows together. Now that main trail that cuts across, now it goes straight through. You see that street? Look at the tree-lined streets. 
it goes straight through and then it curves a little bit through this cul-de-sac then it cuts over to uh, two areas it actually cuts over uh, uh, with a regular walk to the main street but look at as it goes around this pond uh, you can see that and now that it comes around those homes into the park through the cul-de-sac then connecting to the next cul-de-sac now what's interesting is this is a rolling site and typically we, we don't care if the uh, walks meander or if they're straight because you won't be able to see through the site if the top topography doesn't let you but we spotted an area that is flat through the site so when you're on this trail you could see right through this to the end of the site and that's what we like to do and in order to do that we actually designed the main trails first that's the only way you could pull that off so uh, with our uh, well I've been doing this now for you know 50 years over 50 years and so with this experience we just uh, instantly see opportunities that uh, you know other firms just don't have the experience to do and then we're great we're able to create something spectacular there's no place on this site that's non-premium so you know compared to the original plan there was very few space spots on this site. I think there was 15 lots that were at a premium setting here everybody's at a premium setting so the market will respond and that's why we get hired and and so you know the opportunity is really phenomenal when uh, you you look at things differently and that's what we do for our clients